I found the crown of France in the gutter and placed it atop my own head. You know, out of all the movies that I've been waiting for, this was the one. Ridley Scott was directing. Joaquin Phoenix is starring a great actor as Napoleon. Somebody who I watched, like, I studied Napoleon. Novels that I read are all from Napoleonic era, whether it's on the British side or the French side. I have seen countless documentaries on Napoleon and the Duke of Wellington. I have studied this. So I was all excited. I said, here we go, big budget film, modern graphics, great actors, and a good director. What can go wrong? Well, I hate to say it, but this movie can go wrong. They really went heavily into the love story. Napoleon and Josephine. Look down, you'll see a surprise. Once you see it, you will always want it. You are nothing without me. Say it. Which would be okay if it wasn't also trying to tell you the history of Napoleon and all his epic battles and his taking over government and how he became the power and all this sort of stuff. In between this really meek man around women and they portrayed him as kind of like a baby, like throwing temper tantrums. Like they didn't portray Napoleon as a conqueror, a hero to his people. They didn't really show the love of his soldiers had for him. They didn't show any of that. They tried in some scenes, but it really came across really badly, 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 badly. And as far as the battle scenes concerned, uh, like, yes, they're big battle scenes. It looks like there's thousands of men on the field, but you hardly have any idea of what's happening. You don't know how they're winning, why they're winning or losing or what the strategy is or anything like that. Even the scene that you see in the trailers where they're shooting the cannons, the guys are falling on the ice. In reality, they probably lost a, a couple hundred men, but in this, they make it look like they lost thousands and thousands of men in that band. That's not how it happened. They lost completely in other ways. But that was one of Napoleon's biggest strategy victories, where he claimed that was the perfect plan that worked exactly the way he wanted it to work. And we have no idea, like I know what he did, because I know the battle. I know the generals involved. I know the mistakes they made. But no, no. We have nothing as an idea of somebody who's just watching this film, what's happening. We just see these massive men go together like this and then shooting cannons on the ice. We don't know, hey, how, why did they go over there? What, like, what's the strategy? It looks like they were winning. Why did they? I don't know. And then, like, every time he's around Josephine and that, they really make him, yes, it's fine to show hey, he's in love with her and things like that, and he's a, he adores her because that's how it was in history. But, boy, they make him just so meek. And whining and temper tantrums and a bully but not like we're supposed to like this guy we're like he's a conquering hero to many people yes he resided over some of the bloodiest battles in the world but you could not argue with his genius when it came to being a general and an emperor he turned around the French who were going bankrupt and everything at the time during the revolution, he took power as a peasant, an ordinary gunnery sergeant, uh, cor sorry, corporal, 
from their artillery, a nobody, and rose to become emperor. And we really don't get a sense of how that's happening. And I went halfway through this movie without realizing that the guy he kept talking to wasn't a fellow general, it was his brother. Like, it's poorly done. It really is. In fact, I will go back to this day. There's a movie out there called Waterloo. And it shows Napoleon abdicating his throne the first time. And just the air and the presence that they have in that movie of Napoleon is amazing. And then they show his return from exile and how the people you know, threw themselves towards him, how, the, how his strategies were winning Waterloo. It was just a couple strokes of bad luck. Rain that morning caused him not to be able to start the battle when he wanted to start the battle. The fact that he sent 33,000 troops chasing Bluco and they, you know, they failed to keep him away from the battle. All these things played into that battle. Otherwise, he probably would have won Waterloo in Europe to this day. could be very, very different. And you got none of that in this movie. In fact, in the Battle of Waterloo, after he was losing, Napoleon stood guard with troops as a, you know, fighting a rear guard so the rest of his army could get away. And in this movie, they make it look like he just ran away. I, I don't get it. I don't get what the choices they made in this. The, the epic scenes and the epic storylines that he has should have been so much grander. And this director knows how to do that. But for some reason, he took some wild twists and turns with these really ridiculous... Uh, sex scenes in the movie not not nudity sex scenes there's a difference you'll see, if you ever see the movie you'll know what i mean or if you ever saw the movie mcgruber an old saturday night night character who did a movie who's supposed to be a spy but he's kind of like he's like ridiculous kind of thing well the, the, if you remember that scene in that movie, that's what they do in this movie. It takes you out of the film. The humor they throw in for ridiculous reasons just takes you out of the epicness of the film. And for me, this movie failed on almost every front. The score is okay. I enjoyed the score somewhat, but when you're not really interested in what's going on on the screen, the score doesn't help a whole lot. Costumes were beautiful, but the choices they made for the characters and the acting, like, I don't get it. Even the person who played the Duke of Wellington in this, Napoleon's arch enemy, was really a throwaway character in this whole movie. Like, anybody could have done this role. They, they, they gave him no personality, no nothing. Many of the epic lines that he says in the movie, it, like, like in history, that are documented, they don't show him saying in this movie. Also, the battle scenes that they show, they make it look like the, the British are marching out to meet the French cavalry and then they form squares. Can you tell I know what I'm talking about here? That's not what happened. They were hiding their men behind the hills and when they pulled the men back over the hills, um, Field Marshal Ney, head of the cavalry, thought they were retreating and launched his entire cavalry, 20,000 cavalry after them, and they were just over the hill. They just formed square. They didn't want march out to meet them. That's not what happened. I have no idea if this director actually knows what Napoleon did or if he just saw a documentary and said, I can do that, and this scene looks good. If you ever want to see a better rendition of Napoleon and... The Duke of Wellington, uh, see the old movie called Waterloo. I hate to say it, much better acted. And, and this is, we're talking 40 years ago, folks. Much better acted, much more historically accurate, and a funner watch than this was. I have no idea why this wasn't called Napoleon and Josephine. 
and why there wasn't more scenes of them saying, hey, this is what it's going to be, guys. It's going to be the love story between Napoleon and Josephine and their rocky relationship through their history. But they tried to do both. They tried to show the historical revel uh, the historical relevancy of Napoleon and all the things he was doing. And, you know, they show him in Egypt. Hey, we're doing all these great things in Egypt. They don't show the great things he did in Egypt, the scientific discoveries his scientists made, why he was trapped in Egypt and couldn't get home. They don't show any of that, any of the history. They don't show anything. And that's a big disappointment. When you're doing a story about a, a real character, you should get that character right. All right, let's just concentrate on the issue at hand. Do you know about movies? Mm -hmm.